everybody. Welcome. I hope you're all having a lovely morning. Um, I'm Rosie and I do lots of crafty things. Hopefully you've seen some of my sessions before. Um, I try to do a lot of things that are either affordable or recycled or sustainable. So today we're going to do wrapping paper. So I don't know if many of you know this, but wrapping paper is sometimes not recyclable, which is quite annoying because it's supposed to be paper. Uh, it's also quite expensive. It can get quite expensive. So I've come up with a really, really simple way of decorating your own paper um, that you can do anytime. You can do it with loads of different materials. It's really, really easy. And all you need to do is buy yourself some brown wrapping paper. So I've got some here this stuff here. So we're going to decorate some of this today. Um, I'm going to do it in such a way that you can do it along with me. But the main thing is to teach you the patterns that I use. And I would encourage all of you, even if you don't have any materials today, if you just have a bit of paper and a pencil or a bit of paper and a pen, then to copy the pattern that I teach you so that you have it there for reference point. Because once you know that, you can go for your life and you can use that over and over again and you can switch it up you can change it you can manipulate it so i'm going to teach you the patterns that i do and they're so effective on paper it really it transforms it the other great thing is that you don't have to be wonderful at drawing because once you wrap up something with your pattern paper you wouldn't believe how transformative it is so we're going to have a go at that today i'm still wielding this brown paper um this is sometimes called parcel paper um or sort of craft paper or just brown wrapping paper and it's the cheapest wrapping paper you can buy if you go into any sort of stationery shop or you can even get them in post offices and corner shops uh where else can you get them pound shops sometimes do them um and you can often get quite a big roll for quite a small amount of money if you think in most shops you might get like a four meter roll for, I don't know, three or four pounds. This stuff, you can often get maybe double that for sort of half the price. You can usually find some brown rolled paper for about a pound, which is great. And you can use, there's so much of it. So you can do it over and over again. And you can, you can change it every time you do it as well. That's the great thing about it. So all you need is one of these guys and some pens. Really, really simple. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the patterns that I use and then you can copy me or you can rewatch this later, of course, if you want to copy me and then you have that as a reference point. Now, I don't have an example piece of paper to show you because I didn't do one. But what I have got, which is very exciting, is a bauble, which I've decorated. Um, and I do these at Christmas just so you can see what sort of patterns we're going to do. And also to get you inspired to think about how you might want to use those patterns in the future because I have applied exactly the same rules from the wrapping paper to these lovely things here. So hopefully you'll be able to see all the lovely patterns. And that's what we're going to do today. And as you can see, it's simple enough to do on something spherical. And it looks really effective and beautiful. And you can change what colours you do. It's very exciting. So I'm sat on the floor today because I thought it might be easier because I'm going to use lots of big bits of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the computer down ever so slightly so you can see the floor um, and then you'll be able to sort of see how I'm doing it. But to begin with, I'm going to start by doing our patterns. So you don't need anything special for this point. I just want you to copy what I do so that you've got them. I'm going to use a black Sharpie so that it's thick and you can see it on the camera. Um, and essentially, we're just doing a series of lines, but each line is a different pattern. And if we stick to that rule, you can't go wrong, I promise. Really, really easy. Um, so I've got just a piece of A4 card here, and I'm going to lean on a bit of cardboard just so that you can all see. And we'll work our way along, I think, probably landscape so that we can fit them all on, maybe. But you just need to copy what I do. It's really, really, really easy. I think this is probably the easiest one I've done so far. Um, and possibly one of the most effective. It's hopefully going to transform the way you wrap presents because you don't need to go and buy any fancy stuff anymore. So you can do it all yourself and very cheaply. So I always like to start with some leaves. Um, and I like to start those in the centre. And you'll see this when I do the wrapping paper. Um, 
because it just sort of gives you a centre point and it gives you a line to work on. So I'm going to start in the centre of the page and I'm going to draw a line. Now, you could use a ruler if you wanted to. However, it doesn't need to be straight because when you're wrapping a present, you can shift it to make it look however you want. So don't worry too much about straight lines. And I think that kind of adds to the effect of it if you're not using rulers because we don't want it to be too um, uniform. We want it to be nice and obviously hand drawn. So I'm going to draw a line down the centre of this page here. And I'll go all the way along. Um, and as you can see, it's ever so slightly wiggly, but that's fine. It'll look great. And I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this into sort of a line of leaves, basically. So essentially, I'm going to do this sort of shape and I'm going to do it either side. And that's going to create, I'm going to go all the way down with this shape and that's going to create like the centre of this ball ball here. And you can change this. I will show you a few different variants to this. So you can do different shape leaves if you want. But it's really easy. It's a bit harder for me because I'm leaning on cardboard. But the other great thing about this is once you're used to these shapes and these patterns, and you're used to doing them, you can be very, very speedy. So it's a really quick craft for you to learn. And you'll be doing it, hopefully, you'll be doing this at Christmas. You'll be like a speedy wrapping paper designer and you'll be able to do this for all the presents. <laughs> Maybe not all of them. It depends how big the presents are, I guess. I'm not sure I'd want to wrap like big dolls houses and stuff with it, but you could if you wanted. So I'm going to go all the way down with these leaves. And as you can see, I'm giving them a point at each end. But you don't have to. You could do different shapes, which I will show you shortly. I'm going to go all the way down here. So there you've got your centre center leaves. Now at this point, if you so wish, um, you could dot the leaves. That also adds something a little extra. So I'll dot a few of these at the top here just so you can see what that looks like. And we're not thinking about different colours at the minute because we're just doing our patterns. But when I do some actual wrapping paper a little bit later, you'll be able to see that you can change what colours you use. You see I've dotted the ends there and you could do that in a different colour if you wanted. That looks quite nice. So, um, as I said, there's different variants for the leaves that you could do. So I'll just show you an example if I was to go next to it. Now, when I'm doing these patterns, I'm not necessarily going to do them in the same order when I do the wrapping paper. I'm just putting them down on paper so that I remember how many I've got and how many different options I have. And then when I come to doing the wrapping paper, I can decide which order they go in. So I've done another line. And now I'm going to be able to do different types of leaves. So I've got some, there's some leaves hanging here on one of my tea towels. You can see there's different ways you can do them. So I might do a wiggly one. A wiggly one might be quite nice. I'm going to start from the bottom now. And I'm just doing wiggly lines like this. Now, these leafy ones, I always find they're the bulkiest of the pattern that we're doing. Like they take up the most space um, because they're double sided, I guess. Um, so I always find these are really good in the centre and you might want to put these in between quite a few of the more simpler patterns that we've got that I'm going to show you. So these wiggly ones are quite nice. I'm going to stop about halfway up here and then do a different type of leaf. So I'll do one more wiggly. And then the other options we've got, you could do much smaller ones. So you could do circular ones. So these ones were pointed at each end. These ones I might just do little circles so they look almost like a string of pearls plant. I did have a string of pearls plant once and I killed it because I'm terrible at looking after house plants. I was pretty devastated because they are beautiful. You see this one's really quick to do. I'm just doing little circles either side. So there you go. You've got three different leaf variations there. And as before with these ones, you could always dot them if you so wish just to add a bit of detail. So I'll just start a few of those so you can see. Lovely. So there's our leaves. Um, now I'm going to go on to a few different other patterns. They're all super simple. So the next one I'm going to do is a spiral. And I'm going to turn my paper so that it's this way because it'll be easier to do. And I'm just going to do a spiral like this. And I'm going to go all the way along. I quite like to try and change it slightly so each circle is slightly bigger or slightly smaller or an angle. 
Um, but you can do it however you wish. Um, but again, really easy. Go all the way along. There we go. So we've got a spiral. So we've got leaves and spirals. The next one is also very easy. We're going to do a zigzag. So zigzag. I'm just going to go along like this. And again, this is easier if you turn the page round. Now, when we come to do our wrapping paper, we're going to do it on the floor because we're going to do quite a big piece. So you'll be able to move, shift the paper around and sort of turn it. With your zigzags, again, your other options are you could dot the insides of the triangles if you so wished. You don't have to, but there's the option. So you can always do it so that it's there for reference. So we've got leaves, we've got spirals, we've got zigzags. The other one, it, I mean, we don't have to draw this if you don't want, it's just simple lines. But the reason that I put them on there is just to remind you to sort of break things up a little bit. So it's another option to break to break up the sort of um, more fancy ones. So I'm gonna just literally draw one line. But what is sometimes quite nice is if you put two lines close together and that kind of makes its own little pattern. So I'm just gonna do that so you've got that for your reference point. So it's starting to come together. What else have we got? Little circles. We'll do some little circles next. So again, dead easy. And although this seems like really simple and not particularly interesting right now, but once we start doing it with different colours on the paper, it will look really effective. And hopefully if we've got time, once we've done the patterns, I'll be able to actually wrap something up so you can see how good it actually looks when it's wrapped. So we've got some little circles there. I'm going to move on to this side now so that I can fill up this side a bit. So the next one I'm going to do is little hearts. Hearts, really, really simple. And they're going to go downwards this way. But you could change which way you did them to be fair. So if I do some hearts like this. And now what's great about this is because we started with our leaf, leafy line in the middle, we can now work alongside that to make sure they don't go on a wonk, basically. So this is why you don't need a ruler. As long as you're pretty happy with that central line with your leaves, everything else can sort of slot in next to it. And as long as you sort of stay relatively parallel to it, you should be absolutely fine and you won't leave any gaps. So I'm gonna do some hearts along here. There we go, got some hearts. And alternatively, if you wanted to do your hearts the other way around, you could. So I'll just show you on this side for reference. So I've sort of turned it this way. So we've got some horizontal hearts as well. There we go. So you got you could choose which way you like the hearts to go. I think I could quite like these ones actually. Very nice. Okay, so we've got our hearts. What next? Okay, next I've got some tiny little arrows. I'm going to do this on this side, and you can do this whichever way you want. But I'm just going to show you. So these. So you might have noticed by now that I'm kind of doing a selection of bigger and smaller patterns. So this is obviously quite a big one, and then your liney ones are simple, but they take up quite a lot of space. But then you've got these ones like the arrows and the and the little sparks, they're small, so you have to do lots of them. And the whole idea of this is that you're you're sort of creating lots of different patterns at different rates, at different sizes, and it will just look more interesting on the eye, and especially when you do them all in different colours. So that's kind of the idea. Okay, so there we've got okay, very small arrows, so I'll show you a bit closer. There you go. Just tiny little. Look like little beaks of little chickens. <laughs> um, what next? Flowers. We can do some little flowers. They're super simple. Um, I'll stay on this side for those. So, again, it doesn't matter how simply you do this. I'm quite quick at doing these patterns because I do them all the time. So you can take your time if you want, but also it doesn't really matter how neat you are because it, because it's a pattern and there's lots of it, it will still look great. So this is sort of one of the bigger ones that take up a bit more space. 
So now we've got our flowers, lovely. And now I'm going to just do some little dashes again. We're, we're changing the shape. So we've got big, little, big, little. So for the little dashes, in fact, actually, I've got some little dashes on here. You can see on the, so these just tiny, tiny little lines. Like here and here. You can kind of see from the ball ball, like the difference in the bigger and the smaller patterns. It just breaks it up a bit. Oh, thank you, Josephine. I'm glad you think that it would make it look easy because I promise you it is. This is the great thing about this. I really love trying to come up with um, sort of craft and creative ideas that that will make people feel comfortable doing because I know a lot of things can be quite scary. So like, for example, I'm terrible with like anything to do with yarn. I'm really awful at knitting or sewing, rubbish at it. And it really scares me. It looks really complicated. So I I appreciate that for a lot of people who don't think they're creative, they might see this, for example, and go, there's just no way I could do this. But it's just a series of very simple lines. And once you've drawn this, if you've copied this, then all you have to do is refer to refer back to this. So this is the hard part, part really. And it kind of takes away the tension and the scariness when it comes to doing the actual wrapping paper because you've got it all down. It's all here. The information's here. Super easy. We can all draw lines, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm gonna do some little dashes next. This one's really easy. You can do this as quick as you like. The only difficulty with this one is trying to keep keeping a relatively straight line and keeping it parallel. What I would recommend if you struggle with doing it in lines and keeping everything uniform is when you're, go when you're drawing, keep your eye on the thing below it. If the thing below it isn't, isn't a nice straight line, then the thing above it will be in a nice straight line. So you're just kind of, as you're going, you're doing a line, you're looking at where this heart is and you're kind of following it along like that. So if you need your brain to sort of think ahead of itself ever so slightly. But again, no real pressure. We're just drawing some tiny little dashes. That's all fine. And we're going to go all the way along here. And there we've got some very little dashes there. And again, sort of breaks it up with the big and little patterns. Uh, I've only got a couple more. So the next one is dots. I know I've done circles, but why not do dots as well? So the circles are literally little circles, but then dots as well are always good. Um, it's the smallest of the pattern, I guess. And I don't need to explain this too much. I'm just going to do, and well, I'm doing this with a Sharpie. When we get onto the wrapping paper, I'm gonna use some bigger marker pens. So the dots might look a bit bigger, but you might want to use a Sharpie on your wrapping paper. So this is the other great thing is that we can decide on colors. The, the beauty of the brown wrapping paper is that it looks great whatever color you choose. If you just use a black marker, if all you've got is some brown wrapping paper and a black Sharpie, you can still do this and it will look amazing. Um, so yes, we'll see in a minute when I get some colours out. But again, we're just doing some very simple dots. Easy peasy. There we go. So we've got the dots there, really tiny ones. And then the last one I've got is sort of, well, I call them stars, but my daughter calls them snowflakes. Um, you could do actual stars if you wanted. So I might as well put that on there while I've said it. If you're very good at drawing stars, then you could do a load of those. But I find these ones much simpler, which is, I think she's probably right. They, they are a bit more like snowflakes, but you're just doing four lines. So if I can try and show that a bit to you a bit closer up so you can see what I'm doing. Ooh, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. And it doesn't matter how neat it is. Again, it's just a pattern. It will sort of, your, your eyes will kind of lose all of that in the detail because there's so much going on. So it doesn't have to be neat at all. Might have been a bit wiggly because I'm doing it like this, a bit of a funny angle. So these ones I think are great. The other thing that you can do if you're feeling really fancy is you can circle them. So this is the other thing that you can do. You can circle things to make them even more patterny. <laughs> patterny is a word. So let me just show you those stars real quick. 
So that's what we've just done. Just the four lines, they look really lovely. But if you so wish, if you want to turn those into quite a big pattern, you might do this. I'm just doing this down here very quickly so you, I can show you a completed selection like this. So I've just done those stars, but with the circles around them. And that just adds a bit of extra detail to it. That'll make it a really nice big one, like the leaves. So if I try and just finish those off real quickly, so you can see. Now, what you can do at this point, if you want to, I don't, I don't like to do this because I like to be as random as possible and I will change my mind at any given moment. See where the wind takes me when I'm doing things like this. But you could number your patterns at this point. So hang on, let me just put my pen down. <laughs> so this is our pattern page. So this is the thing you just need to keep with you when you're doing a wrapping paper. And now there's absolutely no stress whatsoever. You've done it. All you need to do is copy this and put it on some wrapping paper. Easy. But what you could do to alleviate the any any scariness even more is to number your patterns and stick to the the order in which you do them so for example you might call leafy leafy one in the middle here number one and then you might skip if you want to do some of the leaves you might skip this so that they're never next to each other because if they're next to each other it might look a bit weird so you might call leafy number one and then like hearts number two three four five and then go back this side six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then when you come to do your wrapping paper, you just go from one to 12 over and over again and just do it like that. And, and then you basically, the, the whole process is ready for you then. All you have to do is copy the pattern and do it in the order in which you've given yourself. Alternatively, you can just do it randomly, which we'll do in a minute. And especially when we start looking at colors, but this is your reference point now, you've got it. Um, and I've given you what? So was it 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, potentially 14 patterns. And all of them are super, super easy. They're just very simple lines. And in fact, what's wonderful about this is you can get kids to do it as well. I've definitely got my daughter doing this sort of thing before. Um, and it always looks beautiful, even if you even if my four year old scribbling on it still looks great when you wrap it up and it's personalized. What? What more could someone want in a gift? They won't want to open it. So you've got your potentially 14 patterns and we're gonna keep those to one side so that we can see what we're doing next. And now what we're gonna do is actually do some wrapping paper. So I'm going to ever so slightly tilt this camera down so that you can see the floor and we're gonna do, do a big one. We'll do a proper one, shall we? So let's tilt this down so you can see my legs wonderful and we've got some brown wrapping paper here so depending on what you're wrapping it's totally up to you but i'm going to cut quite a big bit just so that you can see it all the way through let's just put, tilt it down oh, slightly more there we go lovely now the only thing i would say with rolls of wrapping paper is they can get quite um rolly believe it or not and so you might want to anchor them down with something Okay, oh, right, so I've got my big piece of wrapping paper and I'm going to anchor it down. So what have I got here? I've got a magazine. I'm going to use that from one corner. And I'll do, I've got a bit of paint here. I'll stick that on there. And I've finished with the scissors now, so I can use the scissors on one side. And I mean, I could use my knee, but I'll put some paint there. So we've got our piece of paper. What you will find with this brown wrapping paper, I will try and show you, is that it has sort of lines on it already. Now, you might not be able to see this on the camera because they're quite faint. But it's almost like the grain in wood, um, but it's like a series of lines. So this can be quite helpful because you can use this as your guide when you're drawing your lines. So I would always recommend drawing the same way that the grain goes or the same way that the roll is. So here's the roll. We're going to draw our lines this way because there's tiny little lines on it, which we can use. Hopefully that makes sense. If I was to shift this ground 45 degrees, then I'd be going the opposite way. And so my lines not, might not be as straight. Okay. 
So at this point, this is where we have to get a bit creative because we want to think about colours if you so wish. As I said, if you just use a black Sharpie, it will still look amazing, I promise. But I would like to do some lovely colours because why, why not? So I've got some Posca pens. I go on about Posca pens all the time because it's all I use. So these are like chalk markers. Now I'm using some really, really big ones today just so that you can see it on the camera. If I was doing this normally, I would use the much smaller ones. So please don't feel like you have to go out and buy these big boys because you don't. Um, you can use whatever markers you want. You don't even have to use Posca pens. You could use colourful Sharpies, colourful markers, whatever you've got. As long as it's thick and you've got lots of different colours or not, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you fancy. I'm going to use loads and loads of bright colours um, and I'm not going to worry about what order I do them in. If, like I say, you fancy um, having an order to do things in, um, I will show you on here, actually, because that might make more sense. If you want things to be in an order just to take away the kind of, you know, extra brain power, then what you could do, if I get a different colour pen, so what you might want to do is you say you number each pattern. You see, I've numbered one next to these leaves here. And then you might assign that pattern with a colour. So what you could do is say, well, this is my number one pattern and I want it to be green because it's leaves, right? So if you do that and then change each colour for each pattern, so you could go, I want my leaves to be green and then my number two is my spiral and I want my number two to be purple. And then you might say, I want my number three to be my zigzags and I want my number three to be blue. And then if you write all of that down on this, then all you have to do is follow it then. When you come to your wrapping paper, you go, okay, I'm gonna do some leaves first and they're gonna be green. Now I'm gonna do my zigzags and they're gonna be purple. And then you do that over and over again, repeat the pattern until you've filled up the wrapping paper. Simple. But I'm not going to do it like that. I'm gonna just do it on a whim, however I feel at each moment. So it's totally up to you how you decide to do it. And like I say, you don't need these big, these big guys. I'm just doing it, it will show up better on the camera as well, that's, that's the thing. I, I like to start in the centre, but if you are following a pattern and a colour pattern from your reference point, you might want to start from the left hand side along or the right hand side along, because then you can stick to your pattern and you can stick to your reference points. But I always like to start in the middle and then work my way outwards, simply because I like to start with my big leaves and then just work my way along and I can kind of see my big and little patterns as I go. So I think we'll start, let's start with a green shall we? And I'm going to do my first line and do my leaves. Now these are really thick so I'm probably not going to use them for all of the patterns, I might just use them for the leaves. I have got some nice fluorescent pens I could use. So I'm working my way along with the leaves. And again, you can take your time with this. You don't have to be as quick as me. I'm just getting through it so I can hopefully have a final piece to show you. So there we've got the leaves. At this point, I'm thinking I'm gonna dot them and I'm gonna dot them with pink, I think. I'm not being too precious about it. These are very big markers, so I will move on to some smaller ones next. So now, because I've decided not to use a, a sort of um, predetermined pattern, I've got to decide which way I want things to go and what I want to do and what colour I want them to be. So I have got these lovely fluorescent ones, so I'm going to do a bright yellow next. And I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do a zigzag, I reckon. So the next one I'm doing is a zigzag. Now, at this point, I'd like to point out that I like to try and stay quite close to the pattern that it's next to, just because you're then going to fill up your wrapping paper with pattern and there's going to be no gaps. If you find that you've left a big gap, then you could just fill it with something else. No problem. So we've got a little, I don't know if you can even see that because it's so fluorescent, just about. So we've got our yellow zigzag. I 
think I'm going to go in straight away with my fluorescent orange and I'm going to go with mm, this is the fun bit I really like this bit deciding what I'm going to do and where, where it's going to go I think I'm going to do some little hearts next and I'm going to do them vertically just so I don't have to move really just me being lazy so do my little hearts going all the way down And again, I'm trying to stay in a straight line and I'm following the, the one to the right of me. Now, you might find it easier to go right to left. I am left handed. So that's why I've started in the middle and working my way this way so that I don't smudge anything. And then I'll probably by the time I've done this side, I can then go from the middle to the left, that, to the right that way. Because um, I'm left handed, I have to think about these things. So I've got my heart. Can you see that? It's very difficult to see. I'll try to use some darker colours next so that it's easier. I've got this purple. Let's see if this purple works. Um, we'll do a... Hmm, I want to do something big, I think. So maybe I'll do the flowers next. So if I do the flowers in purple, they should stand out. Now, when I finish this, I'll be able to hold it up and show you close up what it looks like. Um, because these pens don't show up. This is the thing. These marker pens, they don't show up massively well on the camera, which is why I wanted to show you the patterns to begin with. So you've always got that reference point. OK, there's those purple flowers. Lovely. So now I'll probably do something quite small. And now I'm just going in with all the colours. I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to. I'm not going to select a, just, you know, a, a few colours. I'm just going to use all of them. Um, but what you could do, this is a good point to point out, that you could use a selection of colours based on whoever you're buying the present for. So, for example, if you're buying someone, some, someone who likes gardening, then you can make all of the colours in the spectrum of green. So you could just do greens and yellows. Or if someone's particularly... Um, girly like if it was for a baby girl you could do lots of pinks and purples but I prefer just to use all the colours because I, I want all of them I want all the colours in my life please so I'm going to use this blue one next and I'm just going to do a simple line I think now this is also quite nice because I'm using different sized pens you're getting different sized patterns which is quite good so if you do have different different sizes that's a good thing I don't think that's a bad thing at all because you'll get in different sizes, different textures. What's this? Is that a red? Maybe I'll do a red next. I'll do a spiral, I think. Now you might need to hold on to the paper as you're doing it. You do need a nice flat space to do this. That's the only downfall to this is because you're doing quite a big piece of paper. That's why I'm on the floor because my tape, my desk isn't big enough. Um, the, the difficulty with using a smaller flat space, if you were to sort of like just do half of it on a flat space, is that it's easier for it to get a bit wonky because you can't see the whole picture. You know, you can't see the whole piece of paper. It's harder to line up. I'm going to do some dots now, I think. Do some more pink dots. I quite like the pink dots. And with the smaller patterns, I like to keep them close together as well. As you can see, these dots are like very close together but the other thing you could do is you could mix that up in fact I'll show you that now as an example is I've got this dots there that are really close together but then I might do dots that are further apart as a contrast so let's get that purple again because that was quite um, easy to see so these dots I'm doing a bit further apart right next to these close up close up dots and that in itself is its own little pattern. There we go. OK, so I'm going to try and speed up as quick as I can, because I'd like to show you something at the end here. Um, right. What I'm going to do is just do these patterns as quick as I can. What am I missing? Dashes. I'll do some little dashes next. Because the other thing I would like to do is show you how you can use collage to 
do wrapping paper. Again, all you need is your wrap, the wrap, um, and then magazine cutouts. Really, really simple. What haven't I done yet? I'm not doing stars. Yeah, let's do some stars. Do I want to do them in the blue? No, I'm going to do them in my fluorescent pink. So these are the star slash snowflakes that don't have to be neat at all. And in fact, what you could do is if you were doing them at Christmas, you could turn them into actual snowflakes by having a few little uh, dashes on them. Maybe we'll do a Christmas wrapping paper one day. And then we've got, we've not done any actual little circles yet. So let's do some little circles, do those in red. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm, when I'm looking at where I'm doing the patterns and the colors is, so for example, I'm doing the red here because the last time red was used was over here. So there's a big enough gap between them for it not to get too similar. So that's kind of what my head does, but really it doesn't matter. Another thing that you could do, which would be another way of kind of um, giving you a sort of uniformed way of doing it so you don't have to think too much, is to do rainbow colours. So you could do your pattern and you could do each pattern, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, red, orange, yellow, and you can repeat that pattern. So that's another way that you can take the load off your own brain from thinking about too much. Um, Okay, I'm going to do a green next, and I think I'm going to go for, what haven't I done? I haven't done little arrows yet, so maybe we'll do arrows. They're going to be quite big arrows, though, because this is a big pen, but no problem. Still look good. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to this side. What haven't we used for a while? Um, oh, actually, I think I'm going to do a purple over here before I do that. I'm going to do another spiral because we haven't had a spiral for a while. That rhymed, didn't mean it to. There we go, spiral, spiral. And I'm going to go back over to this side. I might do a yellow. I think I'm going to do some dashes again because they were quite nice. Now, the other thing you can do is you can cut yourself a nice big bit of paper, start the pattern, and then you can put the present on top of it to find out how much you need to do, because it might be that you don't need to fill the whole space. So, for example, I was going to wrap up this box, just because boxes are easy to wrap, and actually, I wouldn't need to do any more to this, because it's not you're not going to see those edges. But I'll just do a couple more in it anyway, and then show you, wrap it up quickly, and then I can show you a couple of other little bits. So what else do I want to do? I think I want to do a nice big line. Let's do a, let's do a couple of orange lines down here. Now they're quite wiggly on lines, but never mind. They still look good. And then we've got maybe another green over this side. And I'm thinking maybe a green zigzag would look nice. There we go. What else haven't we done? I do quite, quite like the idea of doing another star. So I might use this fluorescent yellow star slash snowflakes all the way down here. Now, I haven't done any more leaves. I think if I was filling this paper, I'd probably do some wiggly leaves next. But as it stands, I don't think I need to fill up the paper. And these leaves act as a nice centre point, and you could make sure that that's the centre of the paper. Right, I'm going to stop there just because of the time constraints. But here we have the finished item. I'm going to lift this up again so you can see. So there's our lovely patterns. I've used loads of different colours. I haven't really thought too much other than I don't want the same colours to be next to each other. So you can see that those three greens, there's like gaps between them and there's different, all the different patterns, all in a random order. I didn't really think about which way I was doing it. I was just sort of going maybe big pattern then into little pattern and then sort of 
maybe a couple of little patterns and then a big one. But like I say, if you use your reference point, you can order them however you wish. Right, so what I'm going to do very quickly, I'm going to just chop these ends off just to make it easier. And I'm going to wrap this guy up. And then I'm going to show you a couple of little things before I go. So where's that box gone? Here it is, right behind me. So I just need some tape, don't I? Where's my tape? There we go. Some tape here. So at this point, what we can now do, let me just move this down again for you. I've got my box here. And then what I'm doing is as I wrap it, I'm making sure that the middle bit is the leaf. That's why I like to start in the centre, because that's like my centre point and it makes it easier to wrap as well. So I should do a whole tutorial in actually wrapping, shouldn't I? I really love wrapping. It's one of my favourite things to do. So I'm just going to fold that over so it fits. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show you how effective it looks once it's actually wrapped and that you don't really you don't have to be neat about it you don't have to do anything too special and it will always be better received i think than shop bought wrapping paper because you've made an effort as well on this you're doing something a little bit more sustainable okay so that's that on there. And the other thing as well is I'm kind of like, I'm wrapping up and a lot of this isn't actually going to be seen, which is, which is mad. But it just, the reason I'm telling you that is because it means that it's less pressure. Again, you don't have to be really neat because the overall effect is very beautiful. I hope you can all see how lovely it looks. It's great, so nice. Now, at this point, I'm just going to show you a really simple trick. Again, I, I, I do think I I would love to do a wrapping paper, actually wrapping present tutorial because I do take it very seriously. Um, I, th I think it's one of the best hobbies in the world. So this is another little trick. So one of the things I like doing is also making tags. That could be a tutorial in itself. I'll get thinking about that. But one of the things that I find very useful, if you've seen any of my other sort of papery craft tutorials, you'll know that I really love tracing paper. It's one of my favourite things in the world because it's translucent and it's really lovely to write on. And I always find that tracing paper works really nicely with wrapping paper. So at this point, I'm going to use this to create a kind of label for the wrapping paper because you will still see everything underneath it. It's just an added little extra bit of fun. So what I'm going to do is, again, really, really simple. You don't have to think too much about this. I'm holding a piece of A4 tracing paper, which you can buy quite cheaply. I think a, a pack of tracing paper from the works is maybe like one pound, one pound fifty. Um, so I'm going to hold it over the box that I've just wrapped and just so I can see where it sort of sits. And I'm just going to rip a bit off of it. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I don't need it to go any further than um, the rest of the box itself. So I'm going to wrap, rip it down that way. So now it's sort of that size. And then I'm going to rip it along this way in a sort of a wavy line, I think. Try and make it slightly wavy. OK, so I've got a sort of random bit there. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So I don't need it to be huge because I'm just going to write a name on it. There we go. So now I've got a piece of tracing paper that sort of fits the corner of that box, like that. So what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to stick that down on that corner and then I'm going to write the name on top of it and you've created a label. So this is where a black sharpie will come in handy or if you've got any metallic pens like gold and things like that. So let's put it, let's do it to Ramona. I can't do it to myself, can I? Um, let's see if I can do this so you can see it. Maybe if I hold up my cardboard again. <laughs> if you did my calligraphy tutorial, then you'll know how to write this beautifully. Um, if you haven't seen my calligraphy tutorial, then please watch it because this might come in handy, especially if I do do a tag making 
slash wrapping up stuff tutorial because um, having some lovely writing always helps. So I'm going to write two and then I'm going to write Ramona really big. And I'm just going to sort of follow the shape of the tracing paper. And I might put a little star on it at the bottom there. Why not? And just make these some of these lines slightly thicker. Uh, there we go. Try not to smudge it, Rosie. So we've got our tiny little bit of tracing paper, which we've put a name on. And then all I, all I would do is stick that on the top there. Sorry, that's too high, wasn't it? Like that. Yes, I think that works. So I'm just going to get a little bit of tape and do that for you so you can see it. Just do it right on that corner there so it doesn't cover anything off. So I've been using also using this brown tape. This brown tape is um, not plastic, so this is also great because it's recyclable. And if you use this with your brown tape paper, uh, then you're not going to see it. It's wonderful stuff. Also, you can write on this. Another option. Oh, I've got so many ideas. Um, you could also put patterns on your tape, which I sometimes do. So maybe I'll save that for a wrapping paper workshop. Um, so here we go. I've stuck that on the on the present there. And so you've created a very simple little tag, name tag, which doesn't take away from the beauty of the wrapping paper. Gorgeous. Lovely, lovely. Ah, oh, I really love wrapping presents. <laughs> okay, so before we go, I want to show you one more technique. Let me just move this up again so you can see my face rather than just my mouth. Um, if you, you might have seen, I did a um, greetings card tutorial, which was um, cut like collage. So it was just sort of cutting and sticking. So I want to apply that to the wrapping paper as well, because it's another simple way of creating lovely wrapping paper. This one can be a bit more personalised because you can um, really think about what you're putting out and where you're sticking it and why. So for a bit of context, I have got, let's move all of these out of the way, don't need any pens for this, or you could use pens actually, but you don't have to, so you don't need pens. So what I've got here is I've got like an old book from a charity shop. This is like an old movie book, so it's got some really cool old pictures in it. So if you've got anything like this, any paper that is textured, for example, like old lined notebooks that you don't use anymore or squares like maths books, that sort of thing, always going to look better than plain paper. So if you've got paper that's got stuff on it, so like I've got an old piece, like an old book or you've got sheet music. I love a bit of sheet music. You can buy sheet music from charity shops for about a pound and they last ages because you don't need much of it. Anything like that is going to help you create a sort of collage effect. And essentially, you're creating a piece of art on the wrapping paper and then just wrapping, wrapping something up. Really simple. Um, I don't know why people, more people don't do it. So I'm trying to get through this as quick as I can. Um, I'm going to cut a piece of wrapping paper, and then I'm going to move the camera down again so you can see what I'm talking about. So this piece might not be quite so big. So the paper before I talk. It's quite loud. Okay. Oh, it's rolling. It's rolling on me. Come on. Just going to anchor down my paper. Okay. Let's use this as well. So I'm going to move this down again. Oh, goodness me. Hang on. Sorry about that. Just lost my little, my little shelf there. Okay, right, let's move this up slightly so you can see it. So for this one, what you need to do is you need to know what your, what present you're wrapping first so that you make it the right size. So that's the only thing you need to remember here is to make sure, I mean, it doesn't matter if you go over, it just might be that you lose some of the detail, which would be a shame. So if I can find something that I might wrap, uh, maybe I'll just use this box again to be fair, that might be easier. So let's say we're, we're going to wrap this box. We really want our collage just to be this sort of size. So what I might do, 
um, is just use something to marker it. So I just might make a mark with my scissors. So I know that it needs to be kind of, I'm going to guess to be honest, but you can be a bit neater and use a pencil. And then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut some stuff out and make it into something quite fun. So I've got this page from this old film book, cost me a pound. Um, and I found this picture, which I find quite fun, of a movie star. She looks very glamorous. Lovely, lovely. And I'm just going to cut her out. She's great. I always find a good place to start is like a person. If you find like a picture of a person in a magazine, or like you could even make it so if to make it super personalized, you could put you could use old photographs. If you've got printouts of old photos, or if there's a particular celebrity that the person you're buying for likes, you could try and find a picture of those that in a magazine. Anything like that. That's a really good place to start because you can work on that. So we're going to stick her. I'm going to have to do this upside down, aren't I? Because you can see it. So we're going to stick her in the middle. And then what we might do is we're just going to create some stuff around it, essentially. So we'll maybe use some sheet music. I've also got this old. So I keep this is the other thing I do is I keep wrapping paper. Um, of things that people have gifted to me, I'll always try and keep the wrapping paper because it's always going to come in handy. So I've got this lovely shiny stuff here. Now this, this is a this is fancy shiny John Lewis paper, and it's not recyclable because it's shiny because it's been laminated. So I would like to reuse it rather than throw it away. So what I might do is it's got some lovely flowers in it, so I could always cut some of the flowers out. Or what I think I'm probably going to do is just do some kind of like waves around it, I guess. So I'm going to cut a piece out about the size of what I'm wrapping essentially and it's probably going to sit behind her but I'm probably going to make it into sort of a wave so it's a sort of more interesting shape and this is great because if you're using all sort of like old materials old bits of paper you can kind of have an experiment and see where it goes you can be quite creative with this so I think that's going to sit maybe like that maybe it could be sticking out like it's her voice or something That'd be quite nice. I'm going to do another wave with the sheet music, I think. But maybe make that come to a point. Again, I'm just, just sort of seeing what happens, to be honest. That might, that might stick out there quite nicely. So you, can, you get the idea. I'm just sort of having a play around with different shapes and um, different bits of paper. I might even, maybe I will use this piece of paper to go behind it all. And maybe I'll rip it just to give it a bit of texture like this. And that could maybe sit behind everything. I'm just sort of creating a bit of a collage effect essentially. So that might sit like that. That's quite nice. So I might stay, I think that looks nice, but I might add to it with some pens. So I will probably do that now so that I can lift it up. And I'm going to get maybe some, like this orange might look quite nice with it. And you might want to do, add some things to it. So I'm going to, this is always a nice thing to do is like make it into sun, sun rays. I'm going to do it before I stick it down so that I don't draw on her. So you can see I'm sort of lifting it up, I'm creating a sort of sunshine effect around collage. That move those out of the way so I can finish that off like that. And that's just literally a series of lines. You could also add glitter to it if you wanted to do some patches of glitter. You could use sequins. I might do something around this bit as well in some different colours. So you could just, you could just do some dots. Go all the way around. Like that. Now that's quite a simplified version. I would probably do 
add a bit more to it. In fact, I, will, I think I just need to, perfectionist in me is not happy with this. So I'm going to colour in these, every other one of these thin rays. And then I'll very quickly stick down my little, very simple collage so that you could see what the overall effect would look like if I was to wrap up the box. Um, but you know, you can add to it, you could do some writing on it, you could write their name. If you were to cut out a little speech bubble with a piece of paper, then you've created yourself a label then. You don't need to make a tag because it's already says their name on it. Oh, come on, gone wrong here, there we go. So I'm just gonna colour these in very quickly. And all I'm going to do is stick them down with Pritt stick. I'm not going to go too fancy. You could do it with PVO if you wanted to, but I mean, we are being very extra here, aren't we? We're being we're being very extra because it might be something they just throw away when they open their present. But it's just an added thing. And the other thing as well is that it's arguably cheaper than um, normal wrapping paper. So why not? If you've got a bit of time and you want to make something extra special for someone, then this is the way to do it. So now I'm going to stick these down. I've just got a normal glue stick. And like I say, I'm not going to be too neat with this because I just want you to see how it would look at the end when it's wrapped up. So we'll go and have our well-earned lunch. Okay, and I'm going to stick this one down here. And now because I know I'm not going to use this side of the wrapping paper, I'm using this side to glue on because I'll be able to chop this bit off. So it just gives it that give me a space to glue. I'm just going to make sure that's okay like that. Yeah, I think that's fine. So I've just used one piece of paper from a book and then I've made two wavy shapes. And then I've got this lovely lady. I'm just going to make sure that I stick that down in the right place. So you're going to go there. Just make sure I remember my reference point. Like that. And then last thing to go on top is the lady. She's very fabulous, very glamorous. She's going to go about here, I reckon. And that's like that. Perfect. Now, if I had more time, I would definitely add sequins because I love sequins and glitter. But for now, I just want to wrap this up so you can see the overall effect. I'm moving all this out of the way. So she's going to sit there. So I will cut this side off. And this side as well. I'm just going to go over the wrapping that I did before so you can see. And then you'll be able to see a little close up of it all. Just get some tape. So we just need to make sure that it's sitting right in the middle before I take it down. So Perfect. As long as my collage is in the centre of the thing that I'm wrapping, then we're good to go. I'm doing this very unneatly, so I will endeavour to teach you this better on another occasion. Take her down, and then lift me up so you can see my face. And then last but not least i can show you the finished article it's coming off at the ends a bit because i've not glued it very well but there is your finished collage that was so quick and easy and how effective is that imagine them getting that as a present i think all i'd want to do is just maybe put the person's name on this wave here so it's like she was saying it um and all i've used is just some old old books from a charity shop and some brown paper i think that looks really great and in fact what might be quite nice is if you'd had a little like um, you know, you can get those like shiny, I don't even know what they're called, but they're like little shiny bow things that you get that you put on presents. If that was on her little head there. What a great gift. I wouldn't want to open it. I'd want to keep it forever. But really, really simple, really cheap. And we're help, helping to save the planet a little bit at the same time. What more could you want? So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
as I said, if you've got your reference point for your patterns, you are good to go. You don't need to worry about anything else. You just need to decide what colours you want to use. And with your collages, just cut out whatever you like. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I think we can all agree that I need to do a wrapping paper and tag tutorial because I was getting very into that. <laughs> I'd really love to do that. Um, but I hope you all really enjoyed it and I'm sure I'll see you all soon. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your Tuesday. Enjoy your lunch and thank you very much. I've been Rosie. Goodbye. <laughs>